Some time ago, in Japan, Logan stands by a bridge. In the espionage business, the enemy is always trying to sneak up, but with Logan's animal sharp sense of smell, it's near impossible to approach him that way. As he defends himself from half a dozen attackers, he reflects on the nature of his mission. Cheng was the man that gave him this job. Logan hooked up with him after the war when he was looking for easy and well-paid work. Cheng works for Landau, Luckman and Lake, a mysterious group that specializes on all kinds of shady stuff. Logan was supposed to arrange transportation and security to a scientist named Dr. Carling and his daughter, but no one, not even Cheng, knew where he was meeting with them. A short time later, after he disposed of the assassins, Logan reaches his employer's hideout. Cheng comes out of hiding, and Logan demands answers. Cheng assures him that it wasn't him who sent the assassins, since an attempt for his life was made as well. He tells Logan that they should seek shelter and wait for the backup he requested, but Logan pushes Cheng against the wall, asking who took Carling and what do they want with him. Cheng tells him he doesn't need to know any of that. Logan asks why, and Cheng answers he cannot tell him, so Logan says he'll find him on his own and walks off. Before Logan's gone, Cheng yells to him that Kimura was the one behind it all and that he'll be waiting for Logan, but warning him that he is rushing into something he can't comprehend. Elsewhere, Dr. Carling, with his arms tied up, stands before Kimura, who asks the doctor for something he has sought for so long. Beaten and battered, Carling affirms that he will not give him the device, saying that no amount of torture will cause him to betray his world. Kimura tells him that he has his daughter, Rose, and that he will allow her to live in exchange for the mechanism, but Carling says he'll not do it even for his daughter, cursing the day he opened the doorway between their worlds. Kimura vows that he will have the doctor's invention, and with that, the means to return to his world and seize others. At that moment, Logan enters the room, taking out two guards. Kimura unsheathes his sword, but before he can do anything, Logan kicks it out of his hand and in one swoop cuts the doctor free. Logan and Kimura engage in a fight, with Logan regretting not killing him in Kyoto a long time ago. As they fight, Kimura points out that the universe is awash in mysteries, far beyond the scope of Logan's vision, saying that he does not seek economic reward or the realization of ideological beliefs. He seeks to know, to understand, to conquer. Just then, Carlin comes up behind Kimura and kills him with his own sword. He tells Logan to not believe what Kimura has said, since they're nothing more than ravings of a madman. Years later, in the high mountains of Japan, the scent of flowers in the air overwhelms Logan's heightened senses, and combined with the roaring of the waterfalls, makes this a place where he can push away the turmoil in his mind. But meditation does not mean one loses connection with the world, as Logan parries and counters a surprise attack, leaving a stain of blood in his sparring partner's Miyagi's gi. Logan asks his friend for forgiveness, hanging his head in disgrace. An acrid scent of tobacco reaches him, as Cheng waits for Logan on the shore. Logan tries to ignore him, but Cheng follows him. Logan tells him he's out of the game and that he's wasting his time. Cheng says he has been concerned for Logan since he disappeared without a word from the operation back in Tokyo. Logan continues affirming that he's out, but Cheng asks him even if it's about Kimura. Logan says he found something he needed here and that he's not interested, but Cheng assures him that he is. A short time later, Logan's sensei punishes him for drawing Miyagi's blood. He tells him that his lack of control is his greatest weakness. He confiscates Logan's katana and replaces it with a wooden sword, telling him that a beast sleeps within him, and until he learns how to master it, the beast must have no claws. The sensei dismisses him to ponder, and at the same time, Chang approaches, telling Logan that it is time to get back into the game. Logan asks for details, and Chang tells him that Kimura is alive and has taken Dr. Carling again. Logan asks how's that possible, and Chang says that there are men who are quite adept at cheating death, and he needs Logan's help to retrieve Carling so he can know more. Logan asks if he's gonna tell him what Kimura wanted with Carling in the first place, but Chang says not yet. Chang pleads with Logan to help him as a friend, and Logan sighs, hoping this better be good. The next day, Logan and Cheng stand next to a gigantic round structure, being outfitted with machinery. Astonished, Logan mentions to Cheng that he was right, he wouldn't have believed him. 
Chang tells him that the interdimensional operations is where the future lies. And, confused, Logan asks what this is about, and Chang assures him that this is about Kimura, saying that the technology surrounding them represents the gravest danger this world has faced. They have no idea how many worlds exist beyond their own, but the one they are aware of is bent on conquest, and so someone has to monitor these doorways between worlds. As Logan and Chang enter a small shuttle and rise up to the round structure, Logan asks about Kimura and Chang explains that Carling is the architect of all this machinery, which allows the creation of dimensional gateways. Others have postulated the existence of other dimensions and sought to find them, but only Carling succeeded, completing his first passage to another realm, Kimura's realm, a place where he rules unopposed. Carling spent years in this other dimension, where he met a woman with whom he fell in love, married, and had a daughter with, Rose. All the while, he continued his experiments that came to Kimura's attention not long after. He was intent on using Carling's technology to extend his reign to other dimensions, but Carling resisted, so Kimura had his wife killed, forcing the doctor to flee with Rose back to our own dimension. Kimura was able to follow him through the gateway, but Carling managed to escape. Kimura pursued the Doctor through the years intent on acquiring this technology, and eventually the Doctor sought protection turning to Chang and his employers. Logan realizes that it was at this point that he got involved, and asks Chang how did Kimura escape after he died at the hands of Carling. Chang explains that they are unsure, he disappeared, but after, they discovered a small rift that enabled Kimura to move through, but too small and unstable to allow large-scale traveling. For that, he still needed Carling. Logan asks why did Chang not tell him all of this back in Tokyo, and Chang explains that this discovery is part of a great change that is happening in the world, and he believed that Logan was not ready for such knowledge. But the time is at hand, and Logan will be forced to confront what rages within him, and Chang, pulling a lever in the machine, says that if he fails, all will be lost, as they fall through a tear in the fabric of reality. In the other dimension, Kimura has ruled for many lifetimes. Even in his self-imposed exile on Earth, his rule held steady, but now he has returned home. Kimura asks the Oracle to tell him what has happened while he was gone, and of things that are yet to come. The Oracle answers that his world is as he left it, but for the future he sees two of worlders who will oppose his rule. Kimura realizes one of them is Logan, and the Oracle tells him that he will fight him, but Kimura says that he will fail, as all others have failed before, concluding that he will not die, for this world and many others are his destiny. Meanwhile, Logan and Chang emerge in Kimura's dimension. Logan is overwhelmed by the alien scents overloading his senses, so Chang tells him to take a moment and recover, since they must wait for the arrival of their contact. Soon, Logan starts to pick up the smell of someone or something nearby, but Chang knows it can't be their contact yet, and sets off without Logan. Logan tries to get his bearings, but in this alien world he feels he's being watched. He begins to doubt his vision as the shadows grow larger around him, and from nowhere a new scent emerges. The shadows approach him as they begin to talk with each other, taking human form. A woman and a man. They admire Logan, the off-worlder to them, but feeling disappointed by his looks and the wooden sword he's wielding, questioning if Kimura has sent them in a fool's errand. Logan dares them to try and attack him, so the woman throws flying daggers from her hair. Logan can't block them all and is stabbed by one in the chest. And impressed, the attackers start to wrap Logan in shadows so they can bring him to Kimura. Logan struggles to free himself without success, but at that moment another woman appears. She throws Logan's sword in his direction, urging him to use it if he can, while killing the woman attacker with her clawed fingers. And the man jumps to fight her, but Logan takes him out. The attackers sink back into the shadows and are soon gone. Reading his eyes, the woman assures Logan that they were in fact real, as Logan asks if she is their contact. She confirms, and Logan asks how she turned her fingers into claws, and she explains that she has the ability to morph her body mass. She recognizes Logan, and as he questions their acquaintance, he passes out from his stab wound. Later, Logan wakes up, asking how long he has been out, and Shank tells him that it has been almost a day. The woman that helped him before says that he shouldn't be alive, explaining that the shadow daggers are coated with a lethal poison. 
Logan remarks that he has always been a quick healer, taking out the bandage from his chest, revealing his wound completely healed. The woman says that is not natural, and Logan replies that the same could be said about her trick with her hand. He asks her who she is, since she said earlier that he knows her and her scent is familiar. She answers that it's been years since he first rescued his father, revealing that she is Rose and vowing that Kimura will fall by her hand. Meanwhile, in Kimura's palace, Dr. Kalin begs Kimura to stop the torture, asking to just kill him. Kimura no longer needs him, since the Oracle has already taken from his mind what he requires, but he asks the doctor to yield and supervise the opening of the portal, promising to end his pain and spare his daughter. As Carlin yells for Rose, the shadow assassin that attacked Logan returns with the body of the shadow woman that Rose killed. He asks Kimura for permission to kill them, but Kimura denies it, reprimanding the man for returning without having acquired either of those he sent him for. They are interrupted by the Oracle, that comes to inform Kimura that Logan, Chang and Rose are approaching. Kimura turns to the Shadow Walker and tells him to take the girl, but asks him to not kill her yet. The Oracle remarks that Logan will face Kimura in battle, and Kimura asks who the victor will be, but this the Oracle cannot see. In front of Kimura's palace, Logan, Chang and Rose gaze at Kimura's army assembling at his gates. Rose explains that Kimura plans on leading the army through the rift he is constructing to their dimension, and Chang asks how Carlin could have yielded so soon, but Rose assures that her father would never give in, concluding that Kimura must have a Mind Reaper at his service that could take what Kimura needs from Carlin's mind. As Rose is instructing them to act like they belong, a monk points at them accusing them of being of warlers. Chang plays the part and says that the monk must be drunk to blabber such lies. Rose tells Logan to kill the monk, but Logan approaches and accuses him of speaking ill of the High Lord Kimora and knocks him out instead. Picking up the monk on his shoulder, Logan continues saying that he will take the blasphemer to Kimora's gates so he can be dealt by the Lord himself. They reach the gates guarded by two soldiers, and Cheng, without any effort, mysteriously knocks them out with his fingers. As they enter, they are attacked by Kimora's elite guards. Logan. Using his wooden sword, fights the bigger guard, while Rose faces another one that throws many sharp quills like a porcupine. Logan is surprised to see Rose projecting a force field around her, wondering about what she is. Logan eventually disarms the big guy while losing his own weapon. He gets picked up by the monster, but Rose throws him a knife, and with it, he swiftly disposes of the threat. Logan berates Chang for standing by having a smoke while he and Rose do all the fighting. Chang replies that he was waiting for something, and, at that moment, the Shadow Walker emerges from nowhere and grabs Rose through a shadow portal. Chang says that he was waiting for this and uses his dagger to pin the portal open so they can use it to get to Kimura. Chang jumps in, telling Logan to follow, and Logan, fighting all of his instincts, jumps in. Logan emerges on the other side and is addressed by Kimura, who is fleeing with Dr. Carling. Chang apologizes to Logan for not being able to help, since he is currently engaged in a battle on another plane of existence, keeping the Oracle from destroying them all, and as Kimura makes his exit, he orders the Shadow Walker to kill Rose if Logan tries to follow him. The Shadow Walker teases Logan, threatening Rose with a knife at her throat. At the sight of the Shadow Walker drawing Rose's blood, Logan loses control, and filled with rage, he jumps at him, punching him into unconsciousness. Free, Rose begs Logan to stop, so they can find her father, but blinded by bloodlust, Logan beats the Oracle facing Chang and runs after Kimura. Chang tells Rose that they must stay with Logan, he must not lose himself to the beast within, for if Logan endangers the mission, they will have to kill him. Logan tramples through Kimura's troops, trying to restrain himself, and not far behind, Chang and Rose follow. Logan eventually reaches Kimura and the Rift device, but Kimura tells him that he is too late since the Rift is opening despite Carlin's fortitude. He points out how Carlin was willing to sacrifice everything for a greater good, and recognizing him as a great warrior, but concluding that he is greater, since he used the Oracle to plunder his mind, making Carlin's pain to be in vain. As Rose and Chang arrive, Kimura thrusts his sword into Carlin, sending Logan into a blinding rage, picking up a gun and shooting at Kimura. Kimura evades the shots and charges at Logan, telling him that he cannot be killed. Close by, in his dying breath, Carling instructs Chang to close the rift and take care of Rose, as his daughter weeps for his father. Logan then subdues Kimura, beating him uncontrollably. 
Rose begs Logan to not kill him, saying that if he follows his path, there is no turning back and he will be lost to them forever. Logan tells her he can't stop himself, but she assures him he can, throwing him his wooden sword and asking him to take back his humanity. Logan takes control and asks Shang what would happen if someone were sent through the rift, not allowing it to stay fully open. Shang replies that they would be trapped between worlds until they died, if they could die. Kimura vows to have his vengeance, as Logan kicks him into the rift, and reflecting on the wooden sword that kept him from losing his grasp on humanity, Logan throws it, destroying the device. Three days later, in Japan, at the grave of Dr. Carling, Chang and Logan give their condolences to Rose. Chang tells Logan that Rose will be an operative at his firm, adding that he is welcome to stay too. Rose pleads with Logan, telling him that they would be partners, and Logan says that he's never been much of a team player. But after what she did for him, and after all he saw, he promises to think about it, concluding that it's time for him to start changing the way he looks at the world and at himself. Thank you.